If you could go back, does that have anything to do with? And what if that was your last chance? Seeing how things turned out, would you now change? Was that your decision? I can't imagine what that would feel like. We want to know. 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 People say that within every person there is a whole galaxy. We want to know. Are people right? From the creators of American in Yerevan, Ina M. K. and Stephen Oxner. Homesick. At home. Have you ever felt that way? City. I'm coming home again. Good evening, Yerevan, and welcome to our brand new spanking show here at Radio Van with Ina M. K. and Stephen Oxner. Good evening, everybody. This is called Homesick at Home. <laughs> And we've decided to create this new program and dedicate it to one guest each Friday evening talking about this paradox of what it is like to have a home, to be at home, and to miss the home that you are not currently located at. Tonight we have Maestro Ashot Tigranyan with us. Thank you so much for being here with us. Welcome to our studio. <laughs> Second all, time. <laughs> first of all, I'd like to thank you so much inviting me here. The second time I've been in this beautiful studio, it's like the uh, uh, whole atmosphere gives me f- to feel I, I'm around a friend. Thank you so much for inviting me here. And that's true. <laughs> that's true, yeah. We have also this feeling all the time here at Radio Van where we almost like it's a family. Family. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, it, it, some exactly my feelings. It is like you, you came home and you run the family. Perfect. Perfect. So, Maestro, you're here in Armenia after all these 30 years of being away from your home, second home or first home, <laughs> whatever you feel like. And uh, the first one of the first things that you wanted to create here was Ashotigran and Cultural Musical Foundation. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was officially opened June 13th, right? Congratulations, think, by the way. Congratulations to us. <laughs> <laughs> to both of you, of course. 13. 13. That means something, you know? The number 13 in, in my life, it's a very lucky number. For me as well, it's my birthday. Even Friday the 13th <laughs> is really a lucky number. Yeah. Well, and well, I can well. have, and, and, you know, black cat when crossing also is... Also lucky uh, for Lucky, you. yeah. L- yeah. I hear you because <laughs> uh, the thirteenth is also a lucky number for me because it's my birthday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When is your birthday? It was recently. Oh yeah. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get old something. October thirteenth. <laughs> wow. Ten so, thirteen. Yeah. So yeah, this is a really lucky number, and um, and so. Uh, first, the first thing you decided to create in Armenia was the foundation, <clears throat> and a few of the just I'll just mention a few of the goals that foundation follows is to promote the development and social involvement in various fields of art. <clears throat> Excuse me, mm-hmm. such as fine arts, literature, cinematography, theater, and mostly music, to take an active role in cultural field by initiating related events, programs, festivals, uh, conferences, l- large-scale events, etc. And um, we know that uh, the foundation has board of trustees, which. Mm-hmm. Uh, consists of three members, you as the president and the founder of the board of trustees, uh, Maher Mukherjee, the producer, movie producer, and uh, um, uh, also Vartan Tigranyan, who is uh, My violinist. Brother, yeah. yeah, your brother, violinist. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, could you please tell us more? Why? Why did you decide to uh, create this foundation, and how did it all start? Well, I mean, the, the answer is simple. I mean, uh, I've been in the United States 30 years, and uh, being Armenian born here, uh, when you get older, and I think I, I uh, very proudly, I can announce being very successful in music world. You know, when you've done something, you like to help other people, and whatever you do, wherever you are, in other side of the globe, uh, your born country is just asking you to come back i mean not come back but you have some kind of very beautiful <laughs> feelings uh, and i am doing 
exactly creating not only this foundation creating this particular one i like to do something where when i was growing up i never had and i uh, and wanted but i never had that's what the, the creating this foundation i like to to help others for to develop their own lives they develop their career as a musician and being around in the cult world of culture i think that's the main main uh goal be to create a foundation is here something that ruben babayan who is the artistic director of our theater the theater the puppet theater mm -hmm. named uh, on sayat nova um, mm -hmm. said to me one time was that the goals of one's uh inner world change as they live life so for him as a director first it was to learn to stage a play yeah then it was to learn how to be an artistic director of a theater and then it was to learn how to change the world of theater inside which he yeah. lives yeah. it seems that this this goal has also happened for you you're wanting to change the world in which you live actually you say that? yes i can say that actually to changing world if i could have that power to change the world i could be the only one because uh, uh, we are See, I'm the, the person uh, who born in 20th century. My expectation of this century is kind of little bit, little bit. Uh, I'm disappointed, disappointed. But the all uh, to us to change coming from different generation, from different world, to create something new, to create something beautiful, to explain uh, the human being around the world, but there is something beautiful exists than anything going on now. I don't like to go to too much in different politics, but being musician and human being, I like to give somebody something beautiful in their own life. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, that's the, my main goal. I travel with my orchestra, like being messenger on biggest stages around the world to explain to people we are we all are human beings we we all we came from same places let's get together understand each other and create something most beautiful and peaceful place for our life hopefully i'm not going out of the subject no because i, I like to talk not. you know i just absolutely I, I, I love to talk <laughs> <laughs> and that's but awesome. stop me if i will go too far please no way well, we we're not gonna stop far. we haven't even gotten <laughs> close to going too so far how much yet. time we have here a lot well, well, a lot a whole hour me. so just we're relax you speak you whatever you want at well, this not. moment we have to go to a quick break but we'll be right back here with Ashur Tigranyan, Maestro. Thank you so much for being here with us. We are here on Radio Vaughn with our new program, Homesick at Home. Homesick. At home. And here we are back on Homesick at Home with Maestro Tigran, uh, Ashur Tigranyan. Excuse me. No we problem. are so happy that you're here. Um, you were just telling us about your experiences on BBC where they only give you 15 minutes. What a nice, relaxing <laughs> hour that we have here to find out all of the interesting things that we want to find out about your life. That's too little, little like 15 minutes. I can't even imagine yeah. <laughs> having a chat or interview for 15 minutes. Oh, that's kind of it. It's a really, really big, uh, for me, huge experience. And uh, I... You know, I'm the person who, who grew up on stage. Mm -hmm. I've been playing in biggest stages with my orchestra around the world. Uh, thousands of thousands of people watching me when I'm on stage and behind me, my orchestra. After five, ten minutes, all they become my friends. Be because, uh -huh. because it's the same. For me, important to go out there and explain we all same. We came from same places. That's for... So it could be BBC 10 minutes in here, very enjoyable one hour. Hopefully sometimes we'll, we'll give you, uh, you will give me more. <laughs> but it's the same. I'm the same person with same needs. Ah, so it's a, it's a way of creating contact with a human being to, to create the foundation of a relationship. Yes. And, and that's, yeah. Your contact is important, especially where you are on stage. You know, uh, you you on on that place to make people happy. But before to make people happy, you have to kind of feel what they need. 
So, uh, so I this just... is on an emotional level, right? Energetic and emotional level. Actually, also. I wasn't uh, uh, not much emotional, but uh, kind of energetic, more energy. Yeah. Again, I just go there and see the people. First, we have to do best for people who came. Well, they bought the tickets. Of course, in the, in Europe, the ticket price is a little bit higher. I went this kind of business, <laughs> but we have to give them more, uh, uh, why they here and, and how much they spend. I mean, it's just kind of a very squared description. Mm. But uh, mostly, again, that your profession, you, you, I have sometimes very professional audience, very non-professional audience. You have to make every everybody available what you what you want to say it uh, through your music to the through the composer we're presenting. Maestro, so, yes. uh, can I ask you a question? Any, uh, any, any question. Um, speaking of the audience, I know there audience, is this yeah. funny story uh, connected with the audience mm -hmm. <laughs> about the sneezing. <laughs> well, sneezing yeah. yeah, can you please tell uh, me? Yeah, <laughs> well, they, again, when you become the friends, I mean, you just, it's like party. <laughs> You're partying and you're sitting and having good time and stuff like that. And I was, uh, I don't remember what I was talking and the lady was, uh, the lady uh, sneezed and I said, bless you. During and, a concert. Oh, yeah, Did all, how many, <laughs> two, three thousand uh, people were just laughing. You have to become <laughs> friends, you know. It's not formal. In my life is, I hate formality. Mm -hmm. Again, based same feelings about other side. You know, uh we're just laughing, talking, and sometimes I make jokes. Uh, I mean, that's the connection, communication with the people is important. Like we communicate now. I see, see you first time, but for me, it's like I, I, I knew you before. That's very a normal feelings and normal actions for the relationship between people. both sides. Yeah. I would like to ask a question about how this changes the way one plays music, because we all know that when you play music, first it's uh, notes on a page. Yeah. Then you either play those notes in the concert or you've already memorized it and you're playing these notes that you already know quite well. When that contact comes about with an audience member, is there something that changes within the actual music depending on the contact? Of course. You see, uh, first of all, music for me, that's speech. You make your speech. Uh, the second world, I never use music when I'm on stage. I have a really incredible memory of music. Mm -hmm. Something else you will ask, maybe I will not remember. In fact, sometimes I'm messing up with the names of my, with my children. But music <laughs> is here. My father is the same way. Yeah, music is here. But again, my action, I, I do two things on stage. Uh, all my performing my own music and music which I'm conducting my orchestra you know I have to show uh, like being conductor and I have to uh, perform like my my own stuff so uh, I never use music I, I just memorize my me musical memory is I think in, in perfect shape and um, in my uh, 61 years you know wow. I wow. never had the problems <laughs> in, in fact this new orchestra I'm sure you will ask that question about this new orchestra but I'm jumping the, the before you ask me this question, uh, I I was uh, rehearsing with them. Today will be fifth rehearsals. Mm -hmm. uh, new music, everything is here, and I uh, in my repertoire, 250 uh, uh, major pieces in my repertoire, and I reckon, uh, I uh, I memorize everything. So I could ask you just for let's say 189. Mm -hmm. you, I, I would name you the piece, and you would be able to play it from memory? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing ability. You know, it, look, I'm 61 years old. I'm playing my music. I started when I was three years old. Right. Before me right. to go special school, I've been trained since I was three years old. So it just, you become machine. Music become part of not only your life. Yeah, you develop kind of body inside your body. body. Everything, and physically, and mentally, and psychologically, yeah. Uh -huh. 
Mm. On a reflex level. And you become anyway, you become music, you know? You turn key on, music goes, you turn key off, it starts. Uh-huh. But it takes whole life. I mean, it's more than uh, more than a half a century. In other words, did you uh, feel that there was a this certain point in your life where there was a switch, and you, uh, for instance, I think I know from an acting standpoint, there are actors who need to warm up quite uh, thoroughly before, before to go on before stage. they go on stage, uh, and know, then there are actors who have been playing for so long that eventually they they just turn a switch and they are already able to go on stage. <laughs> Did you have this you know, being around more than 50 years in music, in this case, maybe in acting same, you become already the character of whatever you're presenting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just, you know, I think in uh, acting technique too, I, I remember in, in end of 90s, I've been invited to perform some uh, small program for Hollywood stars. And I met Elizabeth Taylor, which was, she was, I can, I, I can tell, uh, I spent few times with her, uh, that was incredible person, and Marlene Brando. Wow. And, 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 it's, mm-hmm. uh, and more and more and more. I mean, I just, I'm an old person. I've been b- before you, I mean, and from that century, that's what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, talking with Brando, and I saw this guy, said exactly what I saw him in, in movies. You become something else, you know. You ah. become a character. You, yeah. You bec- yeah. You create your own uh, physical and mental and psychological character, uh, being around the, your profession long, long years. Uh, for me, going on stage, I en- I entering this my world. Mm-hmm. You know, my my concerts sometimes end up two, three hours. In fact, uh, two times in Italy, I, I, it was. Uh, overtime program I, I, I play everything and then the, the the people say the guy was sitting in order and saying maestro can you play more and more and that concert and end up three hours <laughs> but I've, unfortunately right now we don't have three hours and and we need to go on a little break and come back just in a few moments a few minutes we'll be back with more on playing music becoming music and your orchestra and what you're doing here in Armenia after this quick break. Don't go away. Homesick at home. If you could go back... Does that have anything to do with... And what if that was your last chance? Seeing how things turned out, would you now change... Was that your decision? I can't imagine what that would feel like. We want to know. 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 People say that within every person there is a whole galaxy. We want to know. Are people right? From the creators of American in Yerevan, Ina M.K. And Stephen Oxner. Homesick. At home. Have you ever felt that way? City. I'm coming home again. Sitting here in the studio with Maestro, still and sipping our wine. And having a really mm. honest and nice chat. Excellent <laughs> wine, by the way. Uh. Each time I'm, uh, well, again, this is the fourth time I'm uh, here visiting you. Uh, and then uh, when I go through the VIP, they give me kind of as a present. This uh, wine, it's got us, no? Mm-hmm. Yes. Excellent wine. <laughs> Who, whoever is making... See, the, uh, uh, half, uh, half of mine, because my wife is from France, yes. so you know French wine, right? Yes. French yes. cheese and baguette, but I think this is a great too. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and especially and, I and love this red wine. this is not an advertisement. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm not allowed to say, but I just <laughs> no, cannot express of course you're allowed to, no. <laughs> yeah, how, how much I love this. Yeah, very, Incredible. Very Bravo, winemakers of Caras. By the way, Jacques wanted us to make sure that we said hi from him. Hey, my yes. friend Jacques. I yes. miss you. Ho- hopefully, we'll get together again here and drinking maybe whiskey, no? Oh. You, you know, Jacques had a baby <laughs> yesterday. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> the first one, baby girl. The second, the one. second, second girl. One. Second one. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, <hello>. Congratulations. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you sometimes, maybe, no? Yes, maybe. of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I think the next thing we have to talk about is the orchestra. Yeah, Starting definitely. from, can we start from 2006 when you decided to create the Classical Concert Chamber Orchestra, which is actually, I think the name is a tongue twister. 
Yeah. It's, it's a, which is why I think maybe you have the OC, the CCCO abbreviation of it. Why? My main question is why is it that you decided to create a an orchestra where uh, you were both the violinist and the conductor? Well, again, I mean, uh, uh, first of all, before CCCO in nineties, I had uh, another CCC orchestra in management because I was busy with my concert uh, career. I'd been uh, managed by Columbia Arts Management in New York. Uh, president was uh, Isaac Stern. Okay. Actually, th this person, uh, I mean, for me, uh, it's uh, special memories about him, but a long, long story. And then, uh, because of I was busy, I wasn't able to physically to continue that previous uh, orchestra management where I started in the 90s. Uh, new CCCO, uh, which I started from 2006, it, you know, it's funny. Every s success, mm -hmm. it came from coincident. Every, uh -huh. everything, every, Very everything. First time when I started uh, my, my violins and, uh, and then, and then, and then. Uh, it was just uh, some kind of special event in uh, Monaco, Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. and they put together uh, orchestra with a small chamber orchestra uh, with members of the French National Orchestra. There were a lot of people, the French president, and I'm talking about Jacques Chirac, and, and it, it was really beautiful performance. Uh, somebody from audience, uh, uh, came and said, why not create your own orchestra? I said, you know, I'm kind of, I had that it, uh, before and it, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of things to put together because you know, it's not easy to create, not only to create and continue. And, uh, and then uh, when I went back to US, I said, okay, why not? And I started, I, I didn't have an attention to make this uh, orchestra bigger and kind of concertizing and stuff like that. It, you know, uh, this Russian saying says, uh, uh, in Russian, the, you understand Russian, maybe? Yeah, right? sure. Uh, appetite uh -huh. yeah. so, opens up uh, when you So, they're doing the the, your, your meal, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Anyway, it started from there and went on and on and on. I got a lot of interesting feedbacks and a lot of compliments. And, and then also a musician. And orchestra is bigger, more lar larger sounds. Uh, than piano. In this mo modern uh, world now, I think the orchestra is more uh, full of colors and sound than piano. I'm not saying I don't play uh, with, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't play recitals uh, with piano. Sorry, old pianistical world. I'm for you anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but you know, orchestra is something else. It's a, so it started there and went on and on. And we end up, uh, I mean, I end up having this orchestra 10 years and very successful and traveling all around the world, many countries like around Europe and Scandinavia and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, this orchestra, again, I, it, it was coincident again. When I uh, had first visit after my 30 years, beginning of June, uh, in, uh, here in the year one, I've been invited in some, I was in some kind of event, and I saw the guy playing violin. And you know, I saw so much talent, I saw so, so much dedication and love for his doing, but his opportunity was very limited. And I said by myself, why cannot you open the orchestra, which will will give my colleagues, in this case, musicians, opportunity, because be, to become a musician, that's such a long, 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 uh, difficult, dedicated life. And you don't know the end. Now, if I have opportunity, why I cannot uh, the help these young people? So, so we're speaking about the United American the United American, American Orchestra. American Why United Orchestra? American Orchestra? Honestly, physically, because my American Orchestra, well trained, incredible, uh, highest professional levels. You know, uh, we audition worldwide uh, 
300, maybe more people to have only 36 member of the orchestra. I'm talking about CCCO. Mm -hmm. So they really, really have a high experience to combining together and also not only for experience reason. So this is going to be an experience exchange for Armenian and uh, that American That also, parts. but again, I born in this country, I'm Armenian, but America my second home. So I, I combined and everything was inside me combined. So that's where it became United American and Armenian Orchestra. That's, I think that's where, and again, it was coincident. Yeah. By seeing this musician at the event, this is, this playing is... uh, what maybe you would describe a tw top quality yes. technique and what he was playing and thinking, oh, well, I have to do something about this to give him yes. opportunities. Yeah. And so now um, we know that you're uh, doing rehearsals here, right, in Armenia. Uh, could you uh, tell us more? Let's, let's picture uh, these two parts, right? Armenian and American orchestra, two parts. Two, let's pretend, let's imagine that those are two soups <laughs> with different <laughs> ingredients, yeah, two right? Soups. <laughs> two soups. American soup and Armenian soup. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are the ingredients that you would like to exchange, like the to add from Armenian side to the American and the uh, vice versa? So okay, let me tell this way. I remember when I was young and studied with Leonid Kogan. I uh, studied with Leonid Kogan, the legendary Russian violinist. You know who, who he is. Once he made comment. It was interesting, and I remember. Uh, oh, I mean. Oh, during all my life, and, and that's reality. He was telling, there are so many na nationalities worldwide, but musicians, they are, no matter where they're from, same, same nationality. I, I, don't, I, I don't see separation. I don't see something I'm putting separate something together. But uh, I have to create some kind of same high level quality, putting everything together. And that's my job to do. Because, you know, uh, again, Armenian part, the, the incredibly talented young individuals, by their lifestyle, maybe they weren't able to just expose themselves and go kind of a uh, different way uh, that you have in the United States. Uh, opportunities in the United States are unlimited. You know, you're from there. Yes. So that's different. And I, I'm bringing that word, connecting with here, this word, uh, based on my old experience in professional levels. Uh, but again, I don't see the separation. I see only one thing. My colleagues will get together for one goal, to do our best and more than best, to show what we can do, sh to show how much happy we can make other side. I think that's a threat uh, explanation, no? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think in a way it's a, it's sort of like the answer is there's one soup, Ina. Yeah, there's, there's one just soup. one soup. Exactly. It becomes <laughs> one soup, one borscht, you know, Russian borscht, there's one, one borscht, borscht, and just I have the big spoon, I have to mix it and mix it. So until, it's boiling. And then see the Armenia, taste. get ready okay, to taste Okay, you have to add borscht. something else and then, <laughs> and then ready to, to, uh, to present other people. Yeah. To so serve. we just need to wait a little and then have the opportunity uh, to taste that yummy stuff that you're making. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's it will be yummy, but we have to do a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, well, we'll start it now, and then now I am training just only Armenian uh, uh, side. Uh, very soon we'll have uh, half of the the American orchestra side. I think uh, we'll put together, learn and combine and then polish and then serve. And then shine. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a date or are you still stirring, not sure about what time dinner will be? Yes, we have a certain oh. date. Actually, actually <laughs> we have a, a approximately, I think we have a day, but in between two days, mm -hmm. but over sometimes in December. Sometimes. You're talking about the uh, presentation Beginning of the Beginning of winter, so, let's the, say. The opening winter. of Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somewhere between 10 uh, and uh, 17 and a half of December. 
Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> you, Maestro, you spoke about Kogan. Uh, can, could you, do you have any funny stories about him, connected with him? Maybe you can think of it and then we will present it after our break, right? We'll take a break right now. And we are so taking a break. But oh. uh, please remind oh, me about those breaks. Yes, we please will, of course, remind you. After the break, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Stick with us. We're still here on Homesick at Home, a new program with Nina MK and Steven Oxner. Hi. From the creators of American in Yerevan, Ina M.K. And Steven Oxner. Homesick. At home. Have you ever felt that way? Shot City. I'm coming home again. Back here. It's back now home. 47. <laughs> We're back home. Back in our home. Steven, Yerevan. back home, by the way. <laughs> uh, is it? Is it? Am I? <laughs> Am I? <laughs> Uh, we were asking you about your experiences with uh, Leonid Kogan, and I, I have a, pra- a frame of reference that I can I can express to you. I studied at the Moscow Art Theater School, just down the street, actually from yeah, yeah, Moscow, Moscow yeah. State yeah, yeah, yeah. Conservatory. Yeah, yeah. And I always had this feeling when I was there, thinking, you know, I think that for an actor, it's quite a similar experience. Um, to study here as it is for a musician over there across the, down the street yeah and especially from the frame of reference that all of our masters and our teachers always had these insane stories to tell about when they were studying and there was this this great mind of theater who did this crazy thing in his young years so we were yeah. wondering if you had any kind of wild story about Leonid Kogan or your experiences when you were studying there well, uh, having wild stories, uh, I can't recall anything like that. But, you know, when you study with legends like that, and by the way, the time when I grew up and I was in uh, in uh, Moscow Conservatory, exactly what you're talking about, uh, Mahat, uh, you know, in 1970s, you could see all geniuses there. Not only yeah. Kogan at uh, Oistrach and uh, uh, Richter and uh, Gilles, all of them. You know, I'm really very lucky. I I will always thank to God, being very lucky in uh, living and growing up the time where I mentioned seventeen. Because interesting, I will go back about Kogan. Uh, but you know, here the very interesting things. Uh, I, I remember one Kogan was telling. I have a well. He studied with Abram Ilyich Jampolsky. I'm talking about in the Moscow Conservatory, actually. To Abraham Ilyich's Jampolskis, he studied, but they're not connecting. First, he started his school in uh, Dnep- Dnepropetrovsk, that's the mm-hmm. city in Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Abraham Ilyich Jampolsky, but again, not connecting. Again, second one was in Moscow Conservatory, Abraham Ilyich Jampolsky, who, who was pupil of Leopold Auer. And you know, the Yasha Heifet, Misha Elman, all they studied with Leopold Auer. Uh, but interesting uh, fact, which is, I, I, I've been experiencing all my uh, professional as a musician life. You study physically w- with one teacher, but because you surround it, the geniuses where I mentioned, you learn more and more because we visually and not only. Uh, he was telling my teachers beside Jampolsky was uh, Leopold Auer, never he saw, and, and Niccolo Paganini. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see, the uh, you pick up a lot more stuff. You have some kind of levels. Like I'm sure you've been an actor. You sure. agree with me? Uh, uh, when you go back in some kind of, in YouTube, you can see a menu of uh, legends like you never been around. Sure. So that it's kind of you. You study there too. I'm sure Absolutely. you understand. Absolutely. Uh, about the Kogan, you know, uh, this genius was, uh, first of all, incredible, incredible human being. But uh, uh, I had, uh, uh, during lessons where I studied with him, I learned such uncomparable, difficult to express and explain uh, uh, his his uh, teaching uh, system, uh, I cannot tell some uh, something special uh, because again, you 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 know 
uh, lessons where I, I've, I've been with Kogan, it was in, in, in home. You're coming there to study and you don't know who, what he will ask you to play. You have to be ready about everything, <laughs> everything. He will say, play Paganini, <laughs> you have to play Paganini, you have to play anything. And, and it was really easier me to perform on stage, honestly, than in front of this legend. Oh gosh. But the experience for what he gave me, uh, it just priceless, priceless. Uh, but uh, just of one course. thing, I, I will, I, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's connecting or not. Uh, once one of the journalists, mm -hmm. and I was there, they were making the, uh, did you see the last his that uh, the DVD is made, I think by Armenian TV. Uh, it's all DVD made in 1970s, you're playing that uh, Carmen, Waxman, Fantasy, Paganini and okay. uh, stuff like that. The guy asked him question, uh, who is your uh, best composer or best performer? Mm -hmm. he, and he said, you know, when you, when you look on the sky, and you will see stars. Can you tell me which star is brighter, which star you love? Nice answer. Uh, but again, <laughs> this, this person is, I think uh, he was incredible human being, uh, uh, very intelligent. It, it's hard to tell about him. It, it, it is. It is. So it, it, it's hard. It's it's hard. But in meantime, the the person was inside, very inside person. Uh, it's hard to describe it about the and very innocent, uh -huh. very innocent person. Uh, hard to describe. You know, I'm, I'm having difficulty to describe what kind of the exactly the person was uh, uh, Leonid Kogan. But one, I can tell you. I can sign under any paper. The person was genius. Uh -huh. Everything. I remember when I was going in his house. By the way, his wife was sister of Emil Gilles, Elizabeth Gilles. Really? Wow. Yeah, Elizabeth Gilles, another yes. great violinist. Like in uh, 1930s, when Yasha Heifetz had only one uh, visit uh, to Soviet Union mm -hmm. uh, because the Gilles and the this uh, Busa Goldstein, uh, presented by a uh, teacher of uh, David Doistrach from uh, Odessa, Stalarski. Well, it's so two... great to have this experience of uh, meeting all these people. Oh, he, he, yeah, but the interesting Heifetz was uh, just, he was shocked by Gilles and uh, the Busa Goldstein. And he was asking if he can take these two individuals to United States and train them, but because of system. Right. He didn't. Any, any, anyways, I went too far now. Each time I was going to the lesson to Kogan's house, Elizabeth Grigor was saying, Ashutik. He was calling me Ashutik. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Okay. Of course, just only, not always I want a tea, but tea made by her. Yeah. That's the something else, and it was really interesting. Hard to describe, you know. Again, uh, being around legends, you don't learn hundred percent what kind of people they are. Uh -huh. But I will, one thing I can say about everybody: uh, I I knew Ostrach, I knew uh, Kogan, Richter, Gilles, but they all separately legendary, unusual human being. Mm -hmm. Maestro, yeah. we know all of us have heard about the buzz in the city, Yerevan, about the bus symphony. Yes. And Stephen tells me that we don't have time to we talk we about are, uh, it. Unfortunately, we have yeah. to go to another quick break, but we'll be right back and we'll talk about this first project of your foundation before okay. and, and anything that you have as his closing remarks because it's already almost 10. As if you can oh imagine. my goodness, time so flies. We'll be so right back. It's right not right late for this. me if you sure. let <laughs> That's fine. And we're back with closing. <laughs> this is Nina Simone that we've we've had playing underneath us this whole time. Well, not her singing, but her group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but can, can we supported? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
we uh, yeah unfortunately we are time flew by so fast <laughs> yeah it always happens with good company you know you know time i speak flies. french too by the way you speak french well, I do yeah not, yeah I but do maybe speak. sometimes uh, we can uh, well my french is sometimes i'm uh, limping Oh. But that's my wife and my daughter say because my children they all speak five languages besides my any she's a uh, neurology uh, neuroscience major and now learning neurosurgery she speaks uh, seven languages on top of everything oh Japanese fluently and Chinese because her husband is Chinese wow. and I wish I can uh, sh uh, show you my picture of my grandson Bruce mm -hmm. half a Chinese half of everything <laughs> now she's He's playing the violin. Oh my goodness. You have to see how pl he plays. Oh. And I went, I had a, s a small period of time to spend with him. He said, Grandpa, you, you're responsible. I said, why? You're not teaching me violin well. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, Bruce. <laughs> I will show his picture. A beautiful guy. Great. Beautiful. And he will be my successor, by the way. A couple of words about our bus yes, symphony bus flash symphony. mode. Quickly. Okay, quickly, yeah, really quickly. Uh, yeah, I think you did all a great job, very creative, something new, which not only this city, the whole world didn't see it. So I think I'm very proud of you. Maestro was in America and he had friends coming up to him and telling, oh, what, ha what, what is this all about in Yerevan? We saw these videos and we yes. heard about this flash mob of uh, uh, classical music playing in the buses. Well, there were three, only three days and Amer Armenian musicians, a part of our uh, orchestra, were playing uh, classical music in the buses. And um, we collected just the regular city buses yes. going around town. Yeah. Well, and people see it. I see the newspapers would express their just uh, feelings, like uh, even uh, in languages like uh, yeah, newspapers, uh, Azerbaijan and uh, yeah, other, Georgian. Other things, Georgian stuff. Yeah. I was very shocked. But here, what it is? How we work? Uh, not only this bus symphony, we create. Uh, we create uh, a project and we prove and we go. I very much trust my people, the uh, high level of intellectual high level and, and creativity. It wasn't a surprise for me. Again, I am from different world. It wasn't a surprise they will do great job. What type of I didn't knew that, mm. but in in the end, all together it was great performances. It means performances, every everything, and musicians and the bosses and stuff like that. And uh, I think I'm proud of uh, my staff, <laughs> my you. people, who show not only to Armenia and the whole world because comments came from the United States to me too. And by the way, for those who missed this flash mob, or for people who, who don't know who, what we're speaking about, you can always go to our Facebook page, Astro Tigranyan Cultural Musical Foundation, ATCM Foundation, and see uh, the last video which tells about this project. Yeah. Uh, we all, all already have a lot of views, by the way. <laughs> and so uh, stay tuned and you'll find out more interesting and alternative projects created by ATCM Foundation and stay tuned because we're gonna be back next Friday next Friday we'll be back and we thank you from the bottoms of our hearts my pleasure for being here with us this evening my pleasure thank yeah, you so this much was for really inviting interesting here. talk <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for too short, I think. <laughs> last word I would like to say sure. uh, people all around the world let, let's get together and make this world a better place to live. Because we have only one goal, to have a good life. Because we have a families and children and grandchildren. We need to have a good life to understand, with understanding each other. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Jeff. For all of you. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs>